Math 1332, Chapter 2, Set Theory, Section 2.1, Introduction to Set Theory, Video 7. Cardinal number of a set, also known as cardinality. So what do I mean by the cardinality of a set or the cardinal number of a set? Well, it's a pretty straightforward definition. So let's start with a generic set called A. Let A be a set. The cardinal number of A, written this way, in parentheses, capital A, close parentheses, is the number of elements in A. That's all. Cardinal number is simply the answer to the question, how many elements do you have? The notation for cardinality of a set is as written there, just a lowercase n, followed by the name of the set in parentheses. Uh, this is similar to function notation. For those of you familiar with college algebra, or familiar with algebra, I'm about to remind you what that is. Um, for the next 30 seconds, if you want to tune out, that's fine. But if you remember from algebra, you might have seen something like f of x equals x squared plus 1, and you're asked what f of 5 equals and you substitute the five for the X's and you work it out. The notation for a cardinal, the cardinal number of a set is kind of the same idea. It's a function where the thing you put in is a set and the thing you get out is the number of elements in a set. Whereas over here, I put in a five and got out of 26. In general, for a set, what you put into the function is a set and what you get out is the number of elements. Now, if you're uh, not too savvy on what I just said, that's okay. You just need to remember that this is the notation for the number of elements in A. So I'm literally asking you to count how many elements are in a set. So how hard can that be? And why did I write numbers instead of number? But that's all the little n with the name of the set after it is the number of elements in A. Let's take a look at a few examples. Find the cardinal, cardinal number of each set. We've got six examples, so let's just go through them one at a time. All right, let's start with set A, which contains the elements 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18. If you're asked what the cardinal number of A is, I'm simply asking you to count how many elements it has. That's easy. One, two, three, four, five, six. Set A contains six elements. The cardinal number of A is six. Pretty easy, right? Of course, there are things that might give you a, a little bit of trouble. For example, the next one. Set B, which is written in set builder notation is the set of x's such that x is a natural number and x is less than 12. If your set is not written in roster method, you might want to consider writing it using roster method so you can literally see its elements. So in order to answer this, let's see what all elements are in the set. Well, first off, our elements are natural numbers, so they start with the number one, but at the same time, they're less than 12. So we need all the natural numbers less than 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, wait, less than twelve. I don't include twelve. So, how many numbers are in there? Well, I was literally counting the elements as I was writing them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, which means that the cardinal number of B is eleven. Example C. Set C is the set containing the word map. How many objects are in C? Well, there's one word. The cardinality of set C, C's cardinal number, is just one. As opposed to D, which is the set containing the letters M, A, and P, what's the cardinality of that set? Well, it has three elements, the letter M, the letter A, the letter P. So the cardinality of set D is three. And really, I just set up C and D to compare and contrast 
that when you're looking at a set, it's important to know what its objects are, what its elements are. In example C, the only object in there was a single word, the word map. Whereas in set D, there were three objects in there, the letters M, A, and P. But the easiest way to tell that these have different number of objects is by looking at the commas. Commas separate elements in a set. In set C, there are no commas because there is only one element. In set D, there are two commas because they separate three elements. So I wonder if you could draw a conclusion between the number of commas in a set and the cardinality, as long as the set doesn't use ellipses. Hmm, I digress. Set E is the set containing the empty set. Hmm, we saw something like this in a previous video. It looked like this. But I think on this one, it's a little clearer who the set is and what its elements are. The question we're being asked is, what is the number of elements in set E? Meaning, how many things live between those, that pair of braces? There's only a single object. It happens to be the object that represents the empty set. But set E contains one object. Therefore, its, cardinality, its cardinal number is one. What about the cardinality of F? Well, F is equal to the empty set. That's what it says right there in the problem. By definition, how many elements are in the empty set? None. The cardinality of the, the, cardinality of the empty set is zero. In fact, that's another way to define the empty set. It's the unique set whose cardinality is zero. So cardinality is really just an issue of counting. How many elements are in a set? So yay for counting. <laughs>